Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I already did a 40 ounce ball peen hammer and that was from a garage sale that was just down the street and at the same garage sale I picked up a couple of other things and I wanted to show you a little bit of a reason why I did that. Not going to be a long video, at least I hope not. This is a body hammer. Little thing. Thin wooden handle. Needs a little bit of cleanup because it's kind of rough. Looks like it's got some bondo on it. Not unusual for a body hammer. It has a sharp pointed end. Well, kind of a sharp pointed end. It's not, it's not pointed like you poke a hole in something with it. It's more for getting into tight spaces and making a small area, high impact with a small tool. The length of it gives weight. It also gives it reach to get down into tight spots. And then because the length and the weight is lined up over the tip of that point, you can do a pretty big amount of work without doing a whole heavy hit. Why did I buy this? Especially since I already have them. Well, when you look at the difference between them, this is something I picked up at Harbor Freight. I had a 1946 Ford 3-ton pickup truck. The reason it was a 3-ton is it started out at 1.5 ton, and the difference between a 1.5 ton and a 3-ton was the number of leaves on the spring. Since the spring was, the back springs were broken, the leaves were broken and there were missing uh, sections of them, I went down to the scrapyard in Sherwood, Michigan and picked up another set of springs stacked them all up and found out I had enough to make three tons worth of spring balanced out on both sides. Said, hey, that's what we'll do. So then I had a three ton 1946 Ford truck with a lot of work <laughs> that needed to be done on the body. And I originally thought, well, you know, I'm not gonna do anything to it. It's only to haul tractors back and forth to tractor shows. It doesn't have to look all that good. And then I started working on it and as time went on, I just kept going. Well, these ball peen or these body hammers work, but this fiberglass handle on all of these comes loose. Uh, it it shows a fiberglass plug in the top here that's supposed to glue it in, but they come off. And when they do, the only thing you can do is drive it back in. You can't put a wedge in there because this fiberglass handle won't accept a wedge. And I just decided, okay, fine, I'm gonna live with what I got. But I didn't have one of these. I had this thing. And when you look at the difference between this one and this one, this one just looks nice. And also, feels comfortable. This one is, is kind of nose heavy. It's not balanced well. It's also soft. You can tell because it's all marked up. And a body hammer you don't want marked up. I didn't hit any hard edges with it. I just was pounding on the body of the truck to flatten out sections that had ripples and, and dents in them. But Soft steel doesn't work well. This hammer on the other hand, even though it's very old and has been abused, I mean, it's got Bondo on the handle, looks like somebody used this very much. This tip, the end of it is kind of flattened. Looks like somebody hit it against something fairly hard, but there are no dents in this face. It's still flat. So I could work on these and try and make this one look like this, or I can just say, well, you know, that's 
is what it is and, and I'm not going to monkey with it. Odd thing is, these work just fine. They're not designed to be hard. Now some, some of them may be made hard, but these are just cast iron. And since it, it doesn't take a whole lot of heavy blows direct to the face, it's usually in behind a piece of steel that I'm holding it up against and then I'm hitting the steel against it. This is a backer. It doesn't have anywhere near the problems that face of the hammers, which have soft faces and end up getting dented. So I'm going to clean this one up real quick and then uh, we'll come back. Got the bondo off the handle. There's still a few nicks over here, but we're not going to take it down far enough to make the nicks go away. I would weaken the handle too much. Because some of this stuff is just where the wood is compressed. It's not missing wood. It's still there. It's just moved. A little dented. Now, I like boiled in seed oil. It's a very nice coating. Feels good on your hand. But at the same time, there's just something about paste wax. It, it gives a smooth feel with a good grip. It's not slippery. But it just feels good on your hand. Rubber gloves are for the boiled linseed oil because boiled linseed oil gets on your hands and it's hard to get off. Give the paste wax a little time to dry and then come back. Buff it up a little bit. There, that's a nice looking hammer. Now this group of hammers was a nice set to be for a beginner. It didn't cost me much if I had decided, well, you know, body work is just not for me. I could have walked away and not felt bad about it at all. Had very little invested in it. But after I've had some practice with these, having a, a tool that really is balanced and works well, instead of this head heavy, clunky thing, which really is awkward. When you get so you can use that effectively, this makes you just like you went into overdrive. So, that is my shrinking hammer. You knock dents in the material and then you pound the dent down flat and that when you pound the dent down flat you actually thicken the metal at the, at the point where the dent is. You work your way around it and then end up shoving that dent right down into the steel and the steel gets thicker and f as it flattens out. Shrinking hammer. At least that's what I was taught. Nice piece of equipment. Now, this one, I'm told, has a funny name. If you want to know, look up the word twible. Ah, this is a Matco. Same company that made this honking big thing. Good hammer. We'll clean this one up next and talk more about it in the next video. Body work can be the most frustrating thing you've ever learned. But it also, once you get it, it is so amazingly simple. It's just a matter of hitting the metal where you want it to go. And I learned with that 
Cheap Harbor Freight set. Did quite a good job. I was able to take out a two foot long wrinkle in the back of the cab where something hit it as the truck was loaded and take out all the dent and all the ripple and everything completely flat, smooth and planished with that cheap set of Harbor Freight hammers. Just as a side note, I didn't take you through the whole uh, scraping and sanding and wire, steel wooling and, and wire brushing and doing all the little detailed stuff. Do you like this style of video better? Or would you rather have me go through and show you exactly how I go across the wire wheel and use the scraper and do the steel wool to get the finish down, put the blow on it, and tell me if you want to have all that detail. If you like this video, why not go down and hit the like button? And then at the same time, just a little step over, hit the subscribe and hit the bell to get you notification when all the new videos come up. I try and do one every day. Not always successful, but I try and do one every day. If you have any suggestions for new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or the legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.